Once again, Chris Hayes knocks it out. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. We have great stories for you. We have the story, are you better off than you were four years ago? There is no doubt about it. Only a sycophant will go ahead and say, no, things were much better four years ago. And anybody who tells you that things were better four years ago in the aggregate, you can tell that that person has a problem as a problem with reality. So let's let's not even bother about that right now. You are better off in the aggregate than you were. America is better off in the aggregate than we were four years ago. Is it where we want it to be? No. Is our economic system the economic system that it's supposed to be? No. 
But are you better off? Is the country better off than it was four years ago? That's a categorical yes. No doubt about it. And anybody differs with that, you can go ahead and just say, let's see the numbers. I don't want to hear about people's feelings. Let's see the numbers. I don't care about the feelings. I care about the numbers. Now, the feelings is what make you vote. So those of us that are responsible have to make sure that we don't allow the right-wing lying machine to convince others because of their mind not necessarily being as strong as it should be, that somehow going back to the past, somehow going back to a fraud could somehow make a difference. We have got to make sure that does not happen again. So again, I repeat, are you better off than you were four years ago? Look at your 401k. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Look at, the, look at your wage increase over that four years compared to the wage increase over the past four years. Now, you may want to say, but look at what inflation did to us. The guy before created the genesis of the inflation that you're seeing right now. Mishandling of the pandemic was inflationary. Tariffs on China was inflationary. And we can go item for item for item what gave the corporatocracy excuses to create inflation. So again, folks, I repeat, do not allow a feeble mind to make you feeble-minded. Do not allow a feeble mind to make you feeble-minded. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, you know, extra, extra, I've got some news for you. For those of you who believe that there is a real, that, that RFK is in it to give you something of value. That somehow those that are funding RFK are not in there to fund Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is not in there to just be a spoiler to make Donald Trump president again. I want to read you an article from The Common Dreams. Again, Robert F. Kennedy, one of the Kennedy people, is nothing but a fraud. Check this out. Whole thing, title of the article, whole thing is an epic fraud. RFK Jr. official admits goal is to elect Trump. As the saying goes, when people show you who they are, believe them, said a Democratic National Committee spokesman. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. stated platform in the 2024 presidential race centers on promoting an honest government, a clean, healthy environment, and the protection of civil liberties. But this New York State director last week boiled down the independent campaign's true goal at a meeting with Republican voters ensuring former President Donald Trump wins the election. Speaking at a meeting last Thursday, Rita Palma first checked to make sure there were no Biden voters in the House before telling her audience that her number one priority is to ultimately take electoral votes away from President Joe Biden. The Kennedy voter and the Trump voter, said Palma, our mutual enemy is Biden. States, including New York, California, and most of the Northeast, are likely to vote for the Democratic president, she continued. But if Kennedy, whom Palma referred to as Bobby, is on the ballot in New York, the campaign can, could help get rid of Biden. She urged the assembled GOP voters to give their vote to Bobby and at least get rid of Biden and give those 28 electoral votes to Bobby rather than to Biden, thereby reducing Biden's 270 electoral votes. To 100, 270 wins the election, added Palma who was hired by Kennedy's campaign after she canvassed for Trump in 2016 and 2020? If nobody gets to 270, then Congress picks the president. So who are they going to pick? If it's a Republican Congress, they'll pick Trump. So we're rid of Biden either way. 
Political observers have noted in recent months that Kennedy has drawn support from right-wing billionaires, but Palma's blunt description of her plan to block Biden from winning the presidency left critics stunned as the video of the event circulated on social media on Monday. Whole thing is an epic fraud. Kennedy is spouting Russian propaganda, is now openly betraying the country, said political strategist Simon Rosenberg, referring to the candidate's recent comments about Russia's claim that it aims to denazify Ukraine. RFK Jr.'s campaign is saying the quiet part out loud. Matt Corridoni, spokesman for the Democratic National Committee, told CNN, as the saying goes, when people show you who they are, believe them. RFK Jr.'s campaign isn't building a plan or strategy to get 270 electoral votes. They're building one to help Trump to the Oval Office. I repeat, for all of those progressives who believe El Senor Robert F. Kennedy somehow carried the virtue of his uncle. For everybody who thinks Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was there to actually do something positive. First of all, I don't know what, what folks are smoking to believe that a vaccine, a guy who actually has conspiracy theories and all that sort of thing. How could you possibly believe that this guy whose family themselves are saying, please don't vote for my brother. Please don't vote for our relative using the name Kennedy to get votes. Please don't. Please don't. Kennedy is a fraud. I repeat, Democrats who think they're voting for a progressive, a Democrat, they're voting for somebody orchestrating along with Donald Trump, the return of Donald Trump. It's a perfect orchestration, and it has snowed a whole lot of people. So again, RFK is not trying to win this election. RFK is ceding the election to Donald Trump, whether Donald Trump gets the ability to get 270 votes or not. I think, folks, this is not a smoking gun. This is a nuclear explosion. And I think I am surprised. It just shows you that the set, it just shows you that the setup is in, right? If this were on the other side, if this was on the other side, this would have been big news. It would have been all over the media. But it's not only Republicans that want Trump to win by all means necessary. It's not only Republicans that want that. There are certain neoliberal Democrats that are upset that progressives are getting a gain hold on the president of the United States. Because we have to remember where Biden is from. Biden may be a neoliberal, but he's a neoliberal dragging and kicking. His heart, Biden's heart, and I'm no Biden fan, but you don't grow up with the people. You don't grow up as part of that strong, working, middle class, and it just completely be left behind. You can't do it. It's intrinsic to your being. And that is what we must do. Notice that is what we must be cognizant of. Persuasive Barrier, welcome. Barbara Wills, welcome. Lee Grant, welcome. E2247, Bruce Pollard, Michael Rudnan. I'm going to read some of your things in a minute. Eric Hayes. Uh, let's see who else we have in the house. Thank you guys for all. Wow, a lot of a lot of stuff. Or Paul Fleming, welcome aboard. Uh, if I miss you, forgive me. I just started right away and uh and started this stuff. But anyhow, folks, so tell your friends, all your friends that think Robert Kennedy is going to be the savior of the progressives. Robert Kennedy is the one that if we could just get him to be on the ballot, that so somehow he could win. It is there for a purpose. Robert Kennedy needs to be placed in the bin 
of what he's doing. He's a traitor, not only to his family proper, but he's a traitor to the country. He's a traitor to the country for having elected somebody associated and closely guarding the interests of the Russians so that maybe Trump can build a hotel and get some of his bills paid. Let's not fall for it, folks. Let's spread the word because the mainstream media is not going to do it. The mainstream media is not going to do it. Okay, let me read some of what you guys have here, but I'm leaving the article up so that you guys can actually see. The title of the article is that Common Dreams whole thing is an epic fraud. RFK Jr. official admits goal is to elect Trump. As the saying goes, when people show you who they are, believe them. All right, welcome aboard, El Senor, El Senor, El Senor, El Senor. Michael Rodden says, watching from Twitch. Uh, Eric Hayes is in the house, says, now this is our society that benefits from professional athletes. I read that when you put it on this morning. Let me tell you, my problem with billionaires who make money and, and show their benevolence by then giving the money away, that is who gave them the right to be the ones choosing how to distribute our money. Like I said, billionaires have there is nobody who has earned a billion. So the billion that they have is the excess labor unpaid to us and the excess taxes they didn't pay. All right? So therefore, who gave them the authority to redistribute our monies based on their proclivities, their preferences? So that makes no sense to me, Eric Hayes. Uh, E2247's Biden plans a new $18 billion weapon transfer to Israel with 50 more F-15s, another 1,800 of the 2,000-pound bombs, plus 500 more 500-pounders. And, uh, I mean, ridiculous. I agree with you that we, uh, Biden has got to change that. Now, Paul Fleming says, two years ago today, Justin Ketanji Brown Jackson was confirmed by the Senate to the U.S. Supreme Court. Thanks for reminding us about that. Uh, we also have, uh, para ver, para ver, something worth reading. Uh, Paul Fleming says, happy birthday to Ron Johnson, who remains a U.S. senator despite being implicated in the illegal fake elector scheme. Tax message, uh, text message showed Johnson planned to directly hand counterfeit electoral ballots to Vice President Pence. They're all crooks. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael Rodney said, way too many new anime today. Start of the spring season. Feeling distracted. Come on. Stay focused, my brother. Stay focused. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain is in the house. All right, I'm continuing to read before I get to the next video. I'm continuing to read before I get to the next video. Lee Grant says, four years ago, we didn't have two major world conflicts and massive illegal immigration. Really? Two years ago, we were still in Afghanistan. So thank you very much. And there were, again, I want you guys to listen to what Carter said several years ago. We happen to just know about Afghanistan, Israel, Gaza. That's all we talk about. Right? That's all we talk about. As if those are the only conflicts that the United States are involved in right now. Remember what I say about Americans not being aware. Do you know what's happening in Central Africa, Western Africa? No, you don't. Do you know what's happening in the jungles of Peru? No, you don't. Do you know what happened, what's ha where we are executing actions throughout the world? No, you don't. So when you talk about uh, things not being the way they are, remember, our tentacles are in every single part of the world. A lot of it is covert. And while a lot of people are dying, our news media simply is not covering it today. That's all. That's all. So beware of your statements, my brother Lee Grant. Persuasive Barry says, four years ago, no wars were ended and Trump killed more civilians than Obama in only one term. And he killed a lot of Americans with the handling of the pandemic, or should I say the mishandling of the pandemic, uh, and which Brother Redden reiterated. Persuasive buyer says, well, Trump crashed our economy. His last year in office exploded our debt and deficit and ended no wars. And that tax cut, as you said, blew the deficit more so than anyone else. So that's what you want to return to. Bruce says, I'm back from watching the E by Web. All right, the Eclipse by Web. I thought you were going to go to San Antonio or, or take it up north to, to go see it, Bruce. 
All right. Paul Fleming says more jobs have been created under Biden than in any single presidential term. Wages are growing. The structural problem that made it hard for Americans to get ahead have been decades in the making. But will Biden get credit for trying to reverse them? It is our job, all of us, to make sure to understand and make sure people understand that these things were done under Biden and not necessarily under Biden, but under all the politicians that were pushing Biden to do the right thing. Pramila Jayapal, uh, uh, Ro Khanna, uh, Il- Ilan Omar, AOC, uh, Ayanna Presley, Bauman, all these people that, that Biden finally listened to as opposed to just listening to a whole bunch of neoliberals. Now, he did listen to the neoliberals, but all those guys got voices. All of them got voices. Rashida Talib forgot to mention her as well. All right. Uh, Michael Rodden said, yes, RFK Jr. will take a few votes uh, from both candidates, mostly from people who would not vote at all. If the choice came down to Biden versus Trump, Egberto, RFK Jr. is much worse than a spoiler candidate. He's a nutcase almost as bad as Trump. I agree. Uh, Paul Fleming says, why is Trump doing everything in his power to avoid clearing his name? Republicans think about that. Well, I mean, Trump doesn't really care because he knows that his core following doesn't care what he does. Look, Eric Hayes is a Christian. Our brother Eric Hayes is a Christian. Donald Trump is a heathen. Donald Trump raped women. Donald Trump steals from people. Donald Trump does all these things. Yet Eric Hayes support Donald Trump. I want you guys to fathom our brother. What what do we do about our brother Eric Hayes? Who still I sat down with Eric Hayes for several hours and had coffee. We had a lot of conversations that we won't go over here that we you know because again that's a one-on-one conversation. But you think about it. Who can possibly support a rapist, a thief, a thug? And these things I am not just saying to be malicious. That's who this guy is. And that's who many of our right-wing people in this room, they feel comfortable supporting that person. Does that tell you something? What does that tell you? I mean, Garant is, I mean, he is, is a rapist. Not, there are no two ways about it. He is, has several baby mamas. No doubt about it. He has ripped people off. Over and over again, he is a serial bankruptcy bank. I mean, bankruptcy person has no business skills. All right, uh, has a silver spoon in his mouth, and because of the class that he's in, the class supports him. And yet, we have people, including many that don't have a pot to piss in, as they would say, supporting this guy. We can't do much about that. We can't do a lot about that. Those people have a mental issue. What we can do is expose to the people who have their thinking caps on to do the right thing. And that's your job. That's my job. That's our job. Let's remember that. That is our job. Okay, it's it. That's all that we have to say. So for all of those, wh- while you talk about what Biden's disapproval rate is, right wing propaganda is very good, and Democrats play a lousy propaganda game that they need to correct right now. They should hire me. All right, let's see. Uh, Michael Red says Paul, sixty percent of American publics are living paycheck to paycheck. This is down from seventy seven percent under Trump. You want to give Biden credit for making the economy better? That's okay. Just understand that for most Americans, the economy is not good. Again, true. But do we make it worse? All right, let's continue here. Uh, uh, Let's go back. Persuasive Barry says, where are you picking those percentage up? Your butt or Heritage Foundation? No, 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 no. uh, Michael Rudden is correct about 60% of people living paycheck to paycheck. It's really, really bad. It's really, really bad. But under Trump, it was even worse. The stimulus program brought a lot of people out of poverty. Look, 40% of Americans is a lot of people. So there's a semblance of people doing well because a lot of Americans are doing well. But when you get out of the cities, when you go into rural America, when you go into Appalachia, these people are dirt poor. And these are the Trump supporters. These people are 
I mean, the, the, the very rich and the dirt poor that have that that they're 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 doing really, really bad. And Donald Trump has convinced and, and again, mostly white. Donald Trump has convinced them that their that their issue, the reason they're there is because of black people. It's because of brown people. So you see, that is a magical way that Trump intends to win. I win the rich people. And those poor people in Appalachia, all the way down from the Appalachian part of Pennsylvania, all the way down to Alabama, he owns them because he has them believing that anybody that have any kind of pigmentation, they are the reason those upstanding white Americans are poor or don't, don't have anything or they're all on welfare. You don't hear about that on the mainstream media. But all those people are getting the I, – I talk to these people. They're getting the emails. They're getting the – they're going to their churches. They're going to all these civic organizations, and they're getting the information. And we, the Democrats, instead of going into Appalachia, instead of going into the Midwest, instead of going into all these places, we are concentrating on just talking to the choir. I don't just talk to the choir. I reach people. One on one. All of us have to do that. All of us have got to do that. Uh, Bruce says we need to get every state. Yes, sir. They pick voting states by state. So 51 votes, Wisconsin for Trump. Look, I tell you what, the problem is the people who would elect the president on uh, would come not on the new Congress, even if we won it. I think that actually gets picked on the old Congress, and there are more Republican delegations than 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 Democratic delegations, which I think uh, would make Donald Trump the president if there is not an electoral college win. All right, so we need to win the electoral college. I still think we're going to win by a landslide because I think Americans are going to do the job. I think Americans are going to do what's necessary to win. So that's where we're at. All right, let's see what else we got. Paul Fleming says, Biden administration officials on Monday unveiled the details of a new plan to forgive student loans debt, suggesting that millions of Americans could start seeing debt relief as soon as this fall. The new set of proposal, which CNN reported on Friday, have yet to be finalized. I saw that. That's going to help us bring in more people who thought that the guy just isn't working. And, you know, when, you know, it, it just isn't working. And that should... Uh, provide some sort of help. Persuasive barrier. I disagree with Biden about doing enough on global warming, on infrastructure, on wage increases, on health care, on student loan debt, on Israel, Palestine. I'm still going to vote for Biden in November. I'd rather argue with a Democrat about doing a half ass job than fight a Republican for doing horror upon the nation. That is the statement of an intelligent person. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rudnan. Persuasive barrier says we need to stop Given aid abroad and help Americans forgive student loan debt? No, not like that. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying there, uh, but our aid abroad is so minute, except for war, of course, that is Ukraine and Israel. But that's for another subject. All right, Bruce says, I can't believe anyone who is educated can vote for one of the two. This is a two party country, others are noise. But it's not only that, Bruce. It is that, again, I repeat, it is that we have people who are going to vote for a rapist, a thief, a person that supposedly uh, the, the morals of, well, you know what, several baby mamas and you name it. Uh, think about that. Think about that. Okay. I'm scrolling down. I continue to scroll down. I'm continuing to meet people. Brute says, we are all rooting for Biden just because he is not your messiah. He still deserves our vote. Of course. Of course. And, you know, and that's my job as well, right? Uh, to let people remember. Remember, not fall for the right wing quackery. Remember the reality. That's what we're all about. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got here. Paul Fleming says, as political commentator Paul Waldman wrote in his opinion piece for MSNBC, the victims here are willingly opening their bank accounts, and when it crashes to earth, they'll thank Trump for the privilege of being shaken down. They deserve to lose everything because they knew exactly what they were doing when they bought the shares. I guess that is for, I, I, I gave you that story on Friday. All right, let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. Uh, 
Ryan Featherstone says, I don't like RFK either, but he'll be more beneficial to Biden than Trump, ironically. I don't think so. I think uh, if you listen to um, if you listen to certain where certain people are going, I don't think so. Michael Rennes says Egberto would be a good use of a full episode to talk about the current American foreign policy, wholly excluding Ukraine and Israel, Gaza. You're probably right about that. Uh, May gone about an hour ago. Okay, uh, I don't understand that breach. Uh, let's see what it is. Eclipse was great. Glad I took part. I'm glad you took part too. I wish I could. We went outside. It just got dim. That's about it. It was great on TV, though. Uh, Persuasive Barry says, every case never questions all those on paid bill. Uh, that's a different one. Persuasive, I'll take that after. Let's uh, move on before I get to the video. Uh, Paul Feminist says, he's a Christian in name only. True Christians don't support that type of behavior. True Christians have empathy towards others. True Christians have sympathy towards others. This person doesn't. Exactly. Ryan Featherstone says, additionally, there is no such thing as an election spoiler. This is a tactic the DNC does to gaslight people into thinking that they are entitled to the votes. The argument will hurt the DNC. No, no, no. Persuasive barrier, that's not the case at all. Again, mathematic. Look, first of all, do you want Trump or not? Okay, let's say you say you don't want Trump elected. I don't care what the reason is that the DNC uses about a third party. The fact of the matter is the following. Does, does Kennedy have a pathway for the presidency? If Kennedy does not have a pathway for the presidency, anybody who votes for Kennedy is actually, uh, uh, anybody who votes for Kennedy that would not otherwise vote for Trump is a vote that is electing Trump. There's no two ways about it. There's no discussion about it. That is just what's going to happen in said scenario. That's all. And when that happens, Mr. Brother Featherstone, you will be complicit in it. And I would hope, uh, it was, who was that? Persuasive Barry, I mean. I would, no, oh, no, that was Featherstone. I would hope that you will acknowledge that that was a complicity because that is exactly what it would be. You know, we don't need to, you know, again, if the guy doesn't have a pathway, he doesn't. Troy Astro, uh, let's see. Paul Fleming says, House Intel Committee Chair Mike Turner said that Russian propaganda has absolutely seeped into uh, Congress on his side. He did say that. That should also make big news. I misread that comment with percent, Egberto. Okay, great. Got you. Got you. All right, let's see what else we got here. I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down before I get to the other video. Want to make sure I get to y'all first. By the way, I forgot last week. I heard you had a little earthquake last week in New York. They did, yeah. They did have the earthquake in New York. I don't think it went as north to where our girl is, uh, Bridge MCP. Oh, Bridge, apparently you did get it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm still scrolling. Wow, we got a lot of commentary today. We got a lot of commentary today. Uh, Supreme Court is delaying DJT's case on purpose. Of course they are. That's what they do. They, I mean, it, it's, what can I say? Featherstone says, nevertheless, I did already say I would vote for whoever becomes the nominee for the Democratic Party, but I'm still not happy camper. I'm not either. I am not either. But again, life is a set of choices that we make. Anyhow, the question is, are you better off today than you were four years ago? The answer is absolute. Once again, Chris Hayes knocks it out of the park. You know, uh, a lot of Republicans have uh, wanted to say, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Yeah, you are. And, you know, it's interesting because... You can see that it's sort of weighing on them because El Senor uh, Hannity is kind of getting concerned because he's trying to indoctrinate people into seeing that what your eyes are seeing, what your real is seeing, what your checkbook is seeing, what your 401k is seeing, that somehow that isn't real. Just think about what we're telling you. Things are bad. Things are bad. We got to we, we gotta stop letting people influence our beliefs and start looking at the facts. Anyway. Uh, listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. 
it's time for another edition of Are You Better Off Than You Were Four Years Ago? Nearly every presidential candidate asks the question, including Donald Trump, who really shouldn't. And his supporters, folks like Sean Hannity, are even getting defensive about it. But over there at that hard-hitting news show, The View, Whoopi Goldberg is accusing you of having memory issues for believing that you were better off four years ago. Okay, uh, let's try to remember back then. We've got some... uh, Evidence is the front page of the New York Times. It's from four years ago exactly today, April 3rd, 2020. Headline, unrivaled job losses accelerate across U.S. 6.6 million apply for benefits. Commerce grinds to near halt. Few unscathed by toll of virus across the city. That big map there was showing the movements of Americans based on cell phone data. And it showed in white where those stay-at-home orders had halted almost all travel. States like New York and Michigan. The situation was bad, and it was scary, and it was getting worse. And the president, overseeing this unspooling disaster, was trying to sell a totally different reality in his daily 77-minute news conference. Breaking news tonight, more than a quarter million coronavirus cases recorded in the U.S. In New York, the deadliest day so far. Who dropped the ball? Well, I always knew that pandemics are one of the worst things could happen. On the front lines, a dire shortage of protective gear. We have done a job like nobody's ever done a job. This is life or death. Nurses are calling it a daily suicide mission. But as of this morning, people were very, very happy. We are afraid for our patients. We are afraid for our families. We are afraid for our lives. Do you think every state in this country should be prepared for mail-in voting? No, because I think a lot of people cheat with mail-in voting. At some funeral homes, and cemeteries struggle to keep pace with the skyrocketing number of fatalities. You just ask your question in a very nasty tone. Let's go. You didn't give me an uh, answer. Please. Mr. President, I gave you a perfect answer. You know it. It's very hard because, you know, my brother, he, he died alone. It's hydroxychloroquine. I don't know. It's looking like it's having some good results. The major change in guidance, the CDC now recommending all Americans wear face coverings amid new concerns the virus can spread just by talking. This is voluntary. I don't think I'm going to be doing it. Why are you opposed to wearing one yourself? I just don't want to wear one myself. I'm feeling good. Tonight, the economic crisis is spiraling. You try and make it sound so bad. You ought to be, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You know what? You ought to be ashamed. It's such a simple question. The devastating economic toll, the government estimating over 700,000 jobs lost in March, while the actual numbers are far worse. Mr. President, uh, there are news reports that you want to sign the uh, stimulus checks that are going out here in several months. Is that right? Do you want to sign this to me? I know. The underlying unemployment rate today is probably already 10%, if not higher. This is ending. This will end. You'll see some bad things, and then you're going to see some really good things. And uh, it's not going to be too long. So you tell me. You want to trade places with us four years ago? You want to go back there? Are you better off today? Are you better off today than you were four years ago? So absolutely, folks, uh, first of all, the disaster that occurred under the pandemic in the United States of America, all of that could have been mitigated if we had a commander in chief like we had during the Obama years, when uh, a pandemic was about to be born, he took it by he took it by the horns. And he sent the CDC and all the experts all throughout the world to make sure to mitigate that particular outbreak. Uh, Notice that we never really spoke about H1N1 really taking off in the United States, which it could have. Right. Again, I repeat. Had we handled the the a pandemic like responsibly we would not have lost over a million americans we would not have lost our economy we would not have been having to pay out what we're paying out now we would not have gone through the tribulations we would have not given the the thugs uh the the thug ceos a chance to create inflation because they would not have had the excuse to do so. I, sh- I, I said I wouldn't call it inflation anymore. 
the corporate greed index, the corporate greed rate. We would not have given them an excuse. Oh, we have a supply chain problem. Oh, we have shortages. Donald Trump is summarily responsible for the results of the pandemic, a pandemic that in the United States could have been mitigated. But nope, we had an incompetent buffoon as president, and that made a system, that made the condition much worse than it had to be. Again, are you better off today than you were? Four years ago, you're being governed by competence and things are much better. I don't think there is more than one answer. Yes. Absolutely, there is not more than one answer. There is no doubt. Uh, Vri says that's the same one that I did again. I, I must be hyperventilating or fogged mind or I don't know. But, you know, anyway, I think it was worth seeing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael Rana says, exactly. Government forcing parenthood should enrage conservatives, never mind privacy and body autonomy being ignored. We already pay tax and they want. The, again, remember, conservatism of today is not about consistency. It's about just my side. Uh, this is my guy. It doesn't have anything to do with intellectual honesty at all. Uh Things are, let me, let me just say, you know, I would, I, I, I tell you what, I would love all undocumented workers to go on vacation for a week. I would love all undocumented workers to go on vacation for a week. Because for all these people that think they don't want immigration, right? For all these people that are convinced they don't want immigration, they would realize that we could not live without the immigrants. So put it bluntly, we could not live without the undocumented immigrants. Because you know who are manning our packing houses? You know who are ensuring that we can get the things at the price that we want these things? You know who it is? I tell you what, brothers and sisters. Don't be fooled. I, I tell you, I, I watched it this morning again. And um, because a new version of Food Inc. is coming out. I want everybody to watch this movie. It's now, you can watch it for free now on YouTube. It's called Food Inc. Food Inc. 2 is coming out on Friday. But Food Inc. is out now. And it's been out for several years, since 2008. Please watch that entire film. Today was the first time that I, wa I heard about it. I watched bits and pieces of it. But today is the first time that I watched it in its entirety. And it's amazing because it also follows a suit with a whole lot of stuff that I put in my first book called it, uh, As I See It, Class Warfare the only resort to right-wing doom. And to, to put it bluntly, it would be, uh, I, I think, uh, if you see that, if you see that film, you would immediately see the fraud that is our corporate state. You would immediately see that we have serious problems that we need to mitigate. Um, it, just go see it. I put the link in there. I think it should be required watching for everyone. It is that good. It is that good. So check it out if you get a chance. Again, the title of it is called Food Inc. Please check it out. Uh, and, and check it out like tonight. And then let's talk about it tomorrow. Anyway, I got another story that we need to talk about today. And this one is upsetting, probably one of the most upsetting, especially since I haven't received the bills from my wife's two hospitalizations this year yet. And likewise, I have not received the, uh, you know, we're still contemplating what we're going to do about 
her $27,000 um, biopsy bill, which I do not intend to contribute or wealth transfer to these companies for services not rendered at, a, at, at the right price. So here's the deal. The title of this particular article is Damning. Insurance reap hidden fees by slashing payments. You may get the bill. That's a very New York Times type title. It was written by New York Times. As I mentioned this morning in my program, the New York Times has very good reporters. Very good reporters. Unfortunately, they can't or don't get the coverage that they should because, again, this article is hidden away and people read it and then call it a day. But this is a dangerous thing that's happening here. Weeks after undergoing heart surgery, Gail Lawson found herself back in an operating room. Her incision wasn't healing and an infection was spreading. At a hospital in Ridgewood, New Jersey, Dr. Sidney Rabinowitz performed a complex hours-long procedure to repair tissue and close the wound. While recuperating, Ms. Lawson phoned the doctor's office in a panic. He returned the call himself and squeezed her in for an appointment. The next day, he was just so good to me, the patient said. But the doctor was not in her insurance plan's network of providers, leaving his bill open to negotiation by her insurer. Once back on her feet, Ms. Lawson received a letter from the insurer United Healthcare advising that Dr. Rabinowitz would be paid $5,449, a fraction of what uh, the bill was, a small fraction. And they left the bill, the rest of the bill for her, which was $100,000. I'm thinking to myself, but this is why I had insurance, said Ms. Lawson. Who is fighting United Healthcare over the balance? They take out, what, $300, $400 a month? Well, they aren't. Why, why aren't you people paying these bills? The answer is a little-known data analytics firm called Multiplan. It works with United Healthcare, Cigna, Aetna, and other big insurers to decide how much so-called out-of-network medical uh, providers should be paid. It promises to help contain medical costs using fair and independent analysis. Read, it promises to rip you off. It promises to be a parasite. It promises that they will find a way to stiff the insurance company, or rather to stiff the doctor or the hospital in such a manner that the hospital then comes to you. Because like I've, I told the folks this morning, what happens uh, when, when you go to an emergency room and to a doctor or whatever, you're, you, you're in pain, you're made to sign yourself away. If your insurance company doesn't pay this bill, you are responsible for the bill. You are responsible for the bill. So, so, so. But a New York Times investigation based on interviews and confidential documents show that Multiplan and the insurance companies have a large and mostly hidden financial investment to cut these reimbursements as much as possible, even if it means saddling the patients with large bills. The formula for Multiplan and the insurance companies is simple. The smaller the reimbursement, the larger the fee. So they have an incentive to find all kinds of reasons not to pay a bill because whatever they save the employer, whatever they save the insurance company, they make a percentage of it, they pocket it. Here is a company that came into existence from do, for doing absolutely nothing for healthcare. Here is a company that is the, the essential or the actual definition of a parasite. They come into a place, they provide no service, but they harm the ultimate person, the patient. And if they harm the patient and they throw the patient into bankruptcy, they harm the doctor, they harm the hospital. Yes, are the doctors overcharging? Are the hospitals overcharging? A lot of times these guys are overcharging for a specific reason. And what is that reason again? That specific reason is... They overcharge because they know they're not going to get all their money, so they charge as much as they can to get as much as they can. It's all a circling ripoff that would be solved by simply having Medicare for All 
doctors, schools, pay. I mean, there is so much that we can do. As I explained in, in this morning's program, I am actually going to cut out this morning's program and, uh, and, and put it up on the internet because, again, uh, we need to stop this. We need to make sure and stop this. It is a fraud on the American people. It is a fraud on us all. So we got to be we we got to start thinking about not being victims, not allowing them to victimize us. We have to start thinking about how do we actively and I repeat, how do we actively force these thugs to do better how do we do that uh let's see if paul fleming says tonight congressman colin El, uh, elrod joins lawrence on the last word tune in he's a guy going up against ted cruz here in texas so yes my brothers and my sisters the health insurance company is after you again it's an article it's it's a fairly long article uh, go ahead and read it in its entirety because it is worth it. Uh, it is worth reading how they're completely and entirely screwing us. All right. I don't have any more for today. So what I want to ask you is to give me a call. Uh, 823 or 281. 823 7747. And we've got Ray on the line. Good morning. Good afternoon, Ray. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm good, brother Egberto. I just want to uh, close out real quick. I've been listening uh, about the whole RFK thing, and, you know, it really scares me, you know, to the highest because, number one, he is a Kennedy, and I hate the fact that he's using the namesake Kennedy to garner feelings. And the problem with the American, the American electorate is that, you know, it's all about names. I remember that, that movie, The Distinguished Gentleman, Eddie Murphy ran oh, on yes. a ticket just because he had a name that was recognizable. And, right. you know, I appreciate every time you tell people what they're doing. I hope you're getting through to people. That's why I didn't really call in, because I want to make sure they hear. He's a fraud. He has zero chance. He has a snowball's chance in hell of winning the race, and he's basically there to spoil the political game that basically the Republicans love to play, which is the electoral college that is, you know, inherently undemocratic. And if anything, that's the reason that this whole system is rigged, because if you have any other election, the popular vote counts, but these third party candidates always come into these presidential races and spoil it. And I, and, 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 and what goes for RFK, I'm saying the same thing for Cornell West. Now I know Cornell West has a, a totally different agenda. I understand where he's coming from, but he needs to understand also too, that his place in this race is also a, a, a detriment to progressive values and what we're doing. Spared for the message strategically, it's the wrong thing to do. RFK, no, I need to listen to Egberto. I, I get, don't don't take his word for it. Look it up. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Thank you for that, um, Ray. Um, I, I'm I'm going to tell you that I am I, that this came out this early. I'm glad about it because you know the, the one problem that many human beings have is they get they get cemented in their positions. Look, Ray, if you call me and tell me that I'm wrong about something. And you've convinced me that I'm wrong about something. I And I swear this to the depths of my heart. I don't have a problem saying, Ray, you're right. I've got to change how I do things. And if it's something that I need to apologize for as well, I apologize for it. But there are too many people, and especially people that are strong, have strong left beliefs and strong right beliefs. They have a very hard time after they've come down what they thought was a, on a moral reason to support RFK. They have a very hard time, even when presented with the evidence that this guy is actually a fraud and that he's actually knowingly being used. In other words, this is not an accident. He knowingly is being used. It's not like he doesn't know it. He knows that he is being used. Okay. 
And uh, a lot of people, they when they hear that, they get that nudge feeling, but because they are so committed to what they've been telling their friends about, we got to support RFK, it's hard for them to change. Well, guess what? This came out in April. I am surprised we had such a leak in April. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think it was uh, I think it was the biggest mistake that the Kennedy campaign has made, and I think it has come early enough for a lot of the the Kennedy supporters to either shut up or 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 or, or just not keep promoting that somehow Kennedy has some chance, not chance, because it's never about a chance, whether whether he was benevolent in what he's doing. In other words, whether uh, in as much as uh, he may be a spoiler, he was kind, that he was a progressive that wanted good things. We know now that that is not the case. We know now that, that he's nothing more than a stooge for the movement. And we ought to probably check out and see what is it that uh, that uh, that's making him do this? Is there something that somebody's holding over him that makes him destroy the Kennedy's name to do this? You know, so those are the things that we have to watch out about. Go ahead. Yeah, you, I don't think it's anybody holding anything off of him. I think he's just using his name the way he is. I mean, look, I mean, sometimes we look at a name and the name is not a monolith. You know, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Chelsea Clinton, they're all different people. They all have different but value Ray, systems. Perfect Ray, example, I wanna, Donald I wanna, Trump and Mary Trump. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mary is completely against him. But let me ask you this, Ray, because, again, when I said, what do they have over him? I cannot see. First of all, Biden has never disparaged the Kennedy name. Never. What is it about Biden specifically that this guy wouldn't like? And that's why I'm saying I don't I think there's a lot more to it. And I, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot more to it, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But anyway, anything else, my brother? Yeah, well, you touched on it earlier. Like you said, I'm voting for the Democratic candidate in this presidential race and everyone down the ballot because like you said biden for all of his flaws and faults he is listening to the progressive wing the progressive caucus the premier jaya pauls the bernie sanders the aocs of our government so that's the person that i want to continue the work no matter how flawed he is that is all absolutely Thank you, my brother. Anyway, folks, thank you, uh, Ray, and thank you for calling in. Anyway, folks, I got to get out of here. But before I get out of here, I have to ask again to please support the program. We cannot do this without you at all. Uh, how can you support the program? You can support the program easily by going to politicsunright.com slash Patreon, politicsunright.com slash Patreon, and please become a patron. Now, alternatively, you can become a paid subscriber to our newsletter. That entitles you to read off all five of my books, all five of my books. And guess what else I'm going to be? Uh, guess what other uh, I'm go going to be doing? I'm going to be putting the the audio book in each chapter on Substack when I get the chance to to merge all of that together. But again. Become a paid member of our Substack newsletter. I just put that in there, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. And you will be able to not only read all of my books, but I'm putting them in an area that you can also that you can also use it as sort of an audiobook format. Of course, um, you can also support us by getting our books directly. You can get our books, you can purchase our books directly if you don't want to. Do it online. And that is politicsandright.com slash books. My latest book, Tribulations of an Afro-Caribbean Latino uh, Man. But also remember that we have several other books online. Uh, specifically, uh, as I see it, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. That one talks about the economy and much more. How to Make America Utopia. That one speaks about how we take back our economy. It's worth it. How to talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors. Uh, look, and of course, that one is my little weight loss book. Hey, what can I say? You know, we all have our tribulations. So anyway, and of course, the latest book, Tribulations of an Afro-Latino Caribbean Man. So go to politicsandright.com 
slash books, politicsandright.com slash books, and pick up, hey, pick up all five of them. It's worth it. You know, anyway, folks, uh, please subscribe to our newsletter as well, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. By doing any of these several things, you're supporting us, giving that progressive message and making sure that we talk to those marginal voters that need that little reason, that little inch on to move on. We can't do it without being funded. So I ask you so kindly to go to politicsandright.com slash Patreon, become a patron, or go to politicsandright.com slash support, become a supporter. That gives you all the different ways to become a supporter or become a subscriber to our newsletter. Anyway, I got to get out of here. Let me put that newsletter on there one more time and ask you to become a paid subscriber. Got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right.